Salam Pula and welcome to Parentology. I'm Joni Salton, your host. Today with me we have Nam Gizam, who is a journalist and an activist. But we brought her here today to talk about parenting and social media. Welcome to Parentology, Namge. Thank you. Um, first of all, this is you're back in the studio after so long, so a warm welcome <laughs> and congratulations on being a new mom. Thank your, you. your son is seven months. Yes, oh, yes seven months. Yes. All right. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Let's. We will talk about uh, Namgezam and her conscious de decision to not post her child's picture on social media, in particular. But we will also talk about uh, other initiatives that Namgezam has taken as a mother. But before that, how has motherhood been? It's been both challenging and gratifying. I think this is something you hear from new moms a lot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but nothing, nothing I did prior to my becoming a mother prepared me for what I am as a mother right now. I think it's something that I, it's a learning experience every day, I think every hour. Um, but I, I wouldn't change it. I think I wouldn't, I'm glad that I took time to become a mother. So I'm emotionally more prepared. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's going to be the greatest challenge. It is the greatest challenge and going to be the greatest challenge of my life. I've made peace with that. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, let's talk about some of the challenges. It's a big challenge for you. But what are some specific challenges that you face as a new mother? Something that I did not foresee and really took me by surprise, unpleasant surprise, was that I couldn't uh, breastfeed like I wanted to initially. So in the first few days, I um, had to undergo an emergency C-section. My baby was overdue. Um, I think it was also because of the pain of the C-section. I was lactating immediately though. So there was colostrum in the start. So the first day, even the nurse was so happy who was with me. She was like, oh, good, you're lactating. Not this, we have this mm -hmm. issue. So I was thinking, oh, I'm lactating well. So la la da, you know, yeah. everything. And the third, second day, it was just before they, they come for routine rounds and then they check whether you're ready for discharge or not. And then they realized my baby's drop, uh, weight was dropping. Mm. And he was waking up frequently to feed, like uh, mm. by the hour, even in the hospital. And then the nurse figured out, oh, okay, maybe your milk supply is not enough for your baby. So they were trying to help me with supplementary feeding. Mm. Thank God we took a can of formula. Mothers, please take a can of formula with you oh, for backup okay, yeah. every time in the hospital because you never know whether you lactate properly or not, mm. right? So we had taken, just in case, because one of my friends had given birth just, uh, before me and then she was like, just take a, a can of formula. You know, you never know whether you need it. If you don't need it, well and good, but if you need it, then mm. you don't need to scramble. So then um, they helped me supplementary feed my baby. But um, before my birth, my baby's birth, I was prepared to bottle feed him. But when he came out, it was a totally different ball game. I was like, I mm. want to breastfeed him, even though I was not producing enough, mm. right? So that was a huge, I underwent a huge emotional turmoil. It took uh, a lot on my mental health. Um, I had the baby blues, right? That's, mm. that's the standard, right? Most mm. moms go through because you have this huge hormonal drop. And then two weeks, you have these baby blues where you're crying for no reason. Mm. No, like yeah. everything makes you no, cry, yeah. right? Breastfeeding yeah, is making yeah. you cry. Like yeah. my baby's block nose was making me cry. I just <laughs> there and crying the whole time so two weeks i was really worried because i was thinking what if i have postpartum depression but mm -hmm. after two weeks um it started getting a little better even though i had my moments of sadness it wasn't because i do mental health so i could understand mm -hmm. okay this is not depression but maybe my baby blues it took a while only after advice from my friends sharing of their personal experiences could i understand that oh there are options you know natural options organic options mm -hmm. you could have certain seeds um that could help increase your milk supply mm -hmm. so i started taking arjuin right it's mm -hmm. called fennel seeds yeah. so that really boosted my milk supply and by one and a half months, um, I was feeding him properly. But that was a challenge I did not see. That was difficult. Oh, wow. As your child is growing, you think, I mean, there are people who tell you, oh, it'll, it'll get better. But newer challenges keep coming, <laughs> which is why I, I believe in the support system that you need to have around. Of course, uh, if you have a great partner, perfect. Mm. But then it really does take a village to raise a child. True, more, true, like, right, right, right. The more support you have, the better it is. And uh, talking about support, uh, Namgezam has uh, created a, a page called Bhutanese Mama. It's a personal initiative. So uh, let's talk about it a little more. What, what does the page do? So it's basically sharing of my own experiences um, and also advice from doctors because I have a network of them um, that I think most mothers cannot access, I was thinking. And it's also mainly a pay it forward kind of an initiative. Um, when I became a new mom, I suddenly my group of friends suddenly changed. The mm -hmm. ones who were reaching out to me, who I was talking to on a daily basis, were friends who were already mothers, right? Yeah. So they were providing me advice that was so helpful, that was so encouraging, so supportive and so nurturing, like you're saying, a village. So for me, because Tippi and I, we live uh, we live separately, not Tipi's with my mom. Husband, right? Yeah, my, sorry, my, my partner. <laughs> and uh, my mom is not good with kids at all. She hasn't seen or touched kids like babies <laughs> in like forever since she had us. Oh. So forget like uh, counting on my mom for support, oh. right? So we do have help at home and 
I'm so grateful for her. I I cannot imagine how parents do it without a third person to help them or a fourth mm. person to help them. You're mm. talking, right? Um, the social media village helped me a lot, and TP, uh, my partner, is so supportive as well. Um, so that made it easier. Uh, but it was how I felt at that time when somebody would tell me something uh, about something I didn't know and needed direction or where do I look, who do I turn to for um, sharing of this experience or how do I soothe my baby, etc. Mm. And then there's somebody to give you that and the way you feel is so different. You feel calmer, you feel empowered to be a mother. Mm. Um, and that's saying, uh, that's a lot uh, that's a that's a lot uh, for somebody like me to say because I have so much access to information, mm -hmm. right? That's my job to find information. Um, but that it's different when it comes from a peer to peer or a mother to mother, right? Mm -hmm. And it's paying it forward because of how I felt and the gratitude I felt towards my friends who shared the experiences mm -hmm. with me, so I could help myself and my uh, and my baby. I wanted to do it for other mothers, so that was the reason why I put these mama started. And I think there's a space for it because there's so many parents following um, a, a put these mama now. Yeah. So uh, give us an example of what what information do you share? You said you, you've uh, shared um, uh, findings like Ajwain helps with yeah. uh, milk production and all that. But what, like, let's say if uh, there's a mother who's going through baby, uh, her uh, blues, mm -hmm. right, uh, or maybe postpartum, is, is that the page you... Um, which I, would, is I would use a Putnese mama because it's got a niche audience, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mothers, mothers to be uh, pregnant women, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and fathers. So then, then I would maybe I would post it to Mind of a Matter Putan and then share it to a Putnese mama. But then I would also focus specifically if I was doing postpartum depression, baby blues. I would do it because we've covered it in Mind of a Matter Putan. Mm -hmm. I did a radio show on it, and uh, we also have several posts on postpartum depression on Mind of a Matter Putan. But the audience is different; it's a generalized audience mm -hmm. as opposed to a Putnese mama where you have mothers like I was saying parents to be so I am yet to make a post on that I've shared it in my stories but I haven't made a post on the Putni's mama but this is something I'd like to talk about more because people don't realize I mean we talk about postpartum depression there's a little bit of awareness mm -hmm. but a lot of people are not aware that the father can experience postpartum depression and not the mother mm -hmm. as well. So then there's a bit of awareness that needs to be created, but I am not having the time right now. I had time when my baby was younger. Mm -hmm. Right now he's starting to sit, he's starting to do a lot of things and I'm working. Yeah. So it's getting a little difficult for me to find time to really create the content mm -hmm. that I want. So before it was daily postings or every other day, but now it's like, it's great if I'm posting once in two weeks, oh, right? Okay. So then create my content. I have a certain layout that I like to do. So then it's, it's taking time because of that. But this is something I want to touch upon because something I feel deeply about mental health right this was before I even became a mom exactly. and this is something that affects a lot of women and they don't realize that what they're experiencing can be treated you mm -hmm. know and then I think it was in my second month postpartum that I read the story about a mother who was severely depressed she had PPD this was not in Bhutan mm -hmm. um, this was in Singapore if I'm not mistaken yes it was in Singapore and she, you know, killed herself by suicide by jumping off the building with a five-month-old baby. And I cried for like two <sighs> days, like continuously. Even when I think about it now, like my eyes tear up because, because if she had sought help, if she knew what was happening to her, then both the mother and the mm. baby could be alive mm. right now. So, so this is something I really want to take time uh, with and then to um, write about it and share it properly. Yeah. I mean, I went through something like that, but mm. I never actually ever... Acted on it. Right. There were times when, because my daughter was big and she had colic, oh, gosh, and she yeah. wouldn't go to anybody else. It was oh, just gosh. me. So I was losing weight like crazy. Mm -hmm. She was gaining weight, and I would have to carry her on my back, oh, gosh. day or night. And I, would, I remember during those um, one a.m., two a.m., I would be on the balcony because it will have the lights on right. but because she wants to be out or she likes the air outside that calms her right right but whenever she would cry aloud I mean, there were so many times where i thought i could just jump off the balcony with her because right. i could not leave her back right or i couldn't just push her i mean it, it was just it <laughs> was it was it was quite um scary inside my head right right but but the thing is, like you mentioned earlier, I like people like you and I have access to information. Mm. I know I'm not the only person on this right. planet feeling right. like that. And a lot of the times, new moms do feel like they are the only one going through it because they've yeah. lost a lot of their friends, they've lost right. their social life. Right. And you do feel like you're living in the silo ment mentality and you feel kind of... Claustrophobic. Exactly. Yeah, and so, helpless. So pages yeah. like this, and there's another page that uh, Namgizam started two years ago before she even had plans to become a mother. <laughs> so uh, that's Mom Bhutan. Tell me about Mom Bhutan. And the thing is, I once reached out to Mom Bhutan and, um, uh, because it was lockdown time. With COVID, yeah. Yes, and I was 
it was getting crazy in my head and mm. i remember reaching out and it was it was it was the information they gave me i don't know who i talked to in particular but yeah. they gave me a list of things to do or practice at home which mm. helped a lot mm. so that's mom butan that's a different page from butnees mama mm. tell me about mom butan mm. thanks thanks for um um talking about mom butan it's something that i feel very passionately about besides my son <laughs> it's like my <laughs> baby again so um we started on facebook um in 2017 mm. it was launched by the then health minister um tan din ochu and then we had uh, the founding members were myself dr senjo and dr nirula um and we wanted to be there for people you know how psychiatrists are mostly based in thimple at in that year they were now we have counseling services i think all over putan if i'm mm-hmm. not mistaken um but then people didn't have access to somebody they could talk to about mental mm-hmm. health i mean people didn't even know they could talk about mental health right because in our culture very much like south asian and asian cultures it's oh you're so weak you know mm-hmm. uh, man up or like grow yeah, yeah, spine yeah, yeah. or yeah. something like nobody is like oh you're so you know how can you feel so sorry for yourself mm-hmm. it's such a pitiful situation that people don't want to empathize with you and they ask you to be strong not mm-hmm. realizing that sometimes we don't have control over things in our head right mm-hmm. like you don't get over these things like the things yeah. that happened in your mind um so because of that we created the page and there were so many people i am happy to share we have um the transfers counselor also and she is on the board of the putni certified counselors um she instituted that um sring dolkar who's the executive mm-hmm. director of renew so she also came on board and two of us together we managed to prevent one suicide attempt via the mind of a matter putan page on facebook mm-hmm. then i was reeling it's not just on facebook we have a different age group right and on instagram mm. there's a different not just a different age group but just a different social group on instagram so i was thinking oh we need to and dr sanjana don't know how to use instagram so they were like we leave it to you and whoever else you want to be on instagram with so then we went on and it's a different reach the kind of content we post is different on the two pages as well no. so now facebook is run completely by dr sanjo and the national mental health task force so they're posting stuff that they're doing they're inviting people to come and join etc etc while if you look at the instagram page it's more of a um it's like a well-being kind of a page where mm. we of course we talk about mental illnesses but also we talk about positivity daily positivity how do you deal with mental health mental health issues etc so there is i think even before i was pregnant postpartum depression was something my younger sister went through mm. so i knew about it because of my younger sister otherwise i didn't know she was also experiencing seizures because of ppd right mm. and i was like what is this thing you know so mm. then my sister told me it's postpartum depression and that was when i became sensitized to it otherwise mm. i think many people don't i mean this is something that i would like um happening in a health system where not only do they check on you for your vitals you know mm. but also up there yeah. you know not just your body like not down there mm-hmm. <laughs> come and check up here and see are we in a mental state to give love to our babies like you were saying you know how you drained like mm-hmm. your babies i can't imagine having a colic baby i remember talking about you to tip and i was saying i can't even handle this very silent sweet baby of mm-hmm. mine like i know that chinny saldan's baby had colic right mm-hmm. and i don't know how she how she underwent you know mm-hmm. that entire experience but i think it's so important to provide that support and then just to have a conversation with somebody exactly. right to tell you hey chinny you know i know what you're going mm-hmm. through you know but this will not last you know but um see if if you're feeling weak if you're feeling moments of distress it's normal mm-hmm. right there's nobody to tell you oh when you're feeling mm-hmm. like oh you want to jump off that balcony nobody's telling you hey chini that's normal you know yeah, yeah. everybody's hiding this dark mm. side of moms you know like yeah. motherhood parenthood like tipi and i would have moments of rage when my baby wasn't um feeding well i wouldn't sleep as a no. newborn like 4 or 5 hours mm. in the night mm. and we didn't know what was happening and only later we realized oh it's a milk supply issue mm. you know he wasn't he wasn't feeding enough so he can't sleep but then then you get rage you're like oh you know how do i get my baby to be quiet and the thoughts that go in your head are not the Yeah. sweet hallmark moments that you exactly. see right exactly. so these are really dark moments but then if you have a partner you can talk to so tp and i found something called a shaken baby syndrome you know oh, how when you yes. have this overwhelming moments you just want to shake yeah, your yeah. baby right sometimes you do it so much and without intending to harm your baby you end up harming your baby and yes. and then then i started posting and saying if you ever at every time tp talks to new parents he's like every time you're overwhelmed you know you feel like you want to shake your baby just leave your baby on the mm. bed and walk out you know so there are certain things that you can do for yourself and your baby and i think we need to talk about the dark moments a lot man i'm glad you're giving me this platform and asking about my mom putan not to be morbid but it's a serious thing so just yeah if it's overwhelming just leave your baby if you can i mean in your situation it's different but try and see if you can find a moment of relief right that's what the doctors told me too cuz she would cry for hours it would go on for like 3 to 4 hours at a go she cried for 8 months wow and when she finally stopped <clears throat> crying this is funny we were i took i remember taking her to the park she was in the stroller right. and the neighbor from the other building comes comes up to us and is like oh she's finally stopped crying 
gosh. And I was eight months oh my God. of motherhood. And everybody in the building, my building, of course, but then the, the, the neighboring building, mm. too, could hear her. That's how loud she was. But uh, which is why I decided to um, share my journey on mm. Instagram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because when I did that... I could hear, even if it was just one mother writing to me saying, you know what, my baby is doing the same. For some reason, I would be posting at 3 a.m. in the morning because Genzo is crying. Yeah. And I'm like, some, like I, I, I'm tired. If I just write a post, if I just do a, a picture or a video saying mm -hmm. I'm tired, I post it. I'm telling you, somewhere out there, there's a mom who's up at 3 a.m. going through the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. And you don't feel alone anymore. Right. And no, but that helps, helps you too, right? Yes, it Posting, helps. Yes, yes, which yes. is why I was rampant. I went, and that is how I uh, g gathered a lot of my social media followers, to right. be very honest. Before that, I had like a few, what, 1,000, 2,000 because of BBS. But only right. after I became a mother and started sharing my journey did I get a lot of followers. And it doesn't matter whether I have a lot of fo followers or not, but right. it's it says a lot about what my page is doing to other mothers. Right, right. They're, they're connecting with me and they, they feel that support and they right. feel the... Like it resonates. Not, exactly, not it resonates. Alone, right? yes, that experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I was really terrified of having a colicky baby, you know, mm. when, I was, uh, when I was expecting. Um, I, I was really... That this is. I also want to now bring in why I don't. I, I wasn't so active on social media. Yes, let's right? get to that. Now, the first things first. I'm not a lovable personality like you. No, right? I'm a live warrior. People say that there are days when people hate me and they want to kill me. Okay, it's mm. the truth. Like these messages slide into my DM. Mm. So as soon as I found out that I was expecting, I was like, I'm not going to post anything about my pregnancy. I used to be a very superstitious person prior to my pregnancy. After mm. pregnancy, I'm like this full blown. Oh yeah. Putney's mothers. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is it a good day to buy things? I... Is it a good day to go out? Oh, can I do this? But I'm so terrified of bad energy, Chini. Like, I can handle karam, but I don't know if my baby can, right? And I was so worried. You know how it is? There's always the fear of miscarriage. Like, pregnancy is oh. another ball game of mental illness, uh, I tell you, right? Mm. Like, you're so worried. Is your baby going to be okay? Uh, is he going to have all his fingers and toes? You know, is he going to be able to see? Hopefully, he's not blind. Or, you know, mm. all these thoughts come inside your head. So, I was like, one way of being able to protect my unborn baby and myself was to not post about it on social media so I hit that mainly for that reason to protect my baby as well as myself <clears> from karam the bad energy um, and then after that why I didn't want to post my baby really is because I've worked so much with issues of consent mm. um, and also with pornography right so one of the first petitions I started was the non-consensual sharing of sexual material mm. and because I became sensitized to a lot of the darkness that lurks on social media I find it very difficult for me to share my baby like I would want to mm. right like I'm like you too. I like to share stuff, right? There's a term for it. It's sharing thing. Like all parents like to do it. And my sister used to do it. And I, I was such a proud aunt and I wanted to share my nephew all the time. And now that I'm a mother, I want to share all the time too because it's it's so joyful and everything your baby does makes you so proud and so happy. And it's such an accomplishment. Yeah. Like when the Genzo starts, uh, stopped crying, when she started walking, yeah. when she started eating, right? When you start picking up little things, mm -hmm. all these things are such little achievements that you want to share with everybody. In Bhutan, it hasn't happened so much. But then you know about defect technology which, ha which has its roots in pornography, right? where you would take faces of celebrities and then put it on mm. somebody else's body mm. in a pornographic act and then everybody thinks it's the celebrity and they've done it with child pornography. Mm. So then they can take your child's image and doctor it and then put it in uh, and it exists in the Western world. So there are certain celebrities who are so careful about not sharing their children on social media until they're a certain age mm. or posting very sparingly about mm. them. And I will say that I belong to that club. There are two clubs, right? There's one, enjoy sharing thing, yes. right? The word. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> sharing thing, I think, I think it's coined sometime in 2010 mm -hmm. with like social media really taking on and parents being online and who doesn't want to share the somebody that makes them really proud for just mm -hmm. existing right like mm -hmm. I want to do it but because I'm so I'm so uh, what we're, so aware hyper aware of these dangers I find it very difficult mm -hmm. so this is one reason this is the first reason S privacy right mm -hmm. and protecting his privacy um, second reason is consent like mm -hmm. I talk so much about consent um, now it's moved it was consenting as individuals right consent rape culture etc all of that um, now it's consenting with children so then I this is a social experiment for me right because I haven't done it before but I want uh, him to give me his consent mm -hmm. um, that he's okay with me posting him online it's a practice for myself it's something I have to 
daily I'm like Tippi's dying to post his <laughs> face and he's like oh I can't post because of you so mm. I have to we have this conversation right so then it's consent like I hope he's when he's old enough if he says oh, okay mama I'm okay when he understands so I want him to understand the idea of consent mm. especially in the context of child abuse Shani. like I'm hyper aware and paranoid about these things and you know those scary stories that come out right it's so triggering mm. like you Quinzel covers it BBS covers it there's an 8 year old who's been raped um, mm. there's younger 5, 6 year olds who are being raped child abuse pedophilia is real and because of my work in mental health, like Dr. Sancho, he told me that one in nine persons is a pedophile, Chini. So then it oh can be in our circle. You know, it could be you, it could <clears> be <throat> our cameraman, you never know, mm. right? So, and there's no cure for this disease, but it's a spectrum like autism. Mm. So then there are pedophiles who may have those urges, but they will not act on it because they are rational enough, they can rationalize and say, this is not natural and it's not okay for me mm. to do this. And then of course, then you have others at the extreme end of the spectrum who act on it. And then you see all of these mm. stories. So for me, it's so scary to post and even parents I, I, I feel a little uncomfortable and it's also because of a lack of awareness and out of ignorance and parents do it not mm -hmm. because they do it intentionally mm -hmm. children in a state of undress like if you would exactly. ask never post your children in a state of undress mm -hmm. right you never know who is consuming that information that mm -hmm. you're putting out there it's going to be there forever and you know if your child is going to be happy about it when they're like 21 and they mm -hmm. see a naked picture of themselves right mm -hmm. we don't have the right to forget law in Bhutan the EU was trying to implement it but there's a lot of tussle right ongoing so because of these dangers just this is why I avoid. And the third one is my superstitious self. Mm. I don't want bad energy for my baby, you know, bad juju. Yeah. So that, I mean, like I was saying, I'm, I am I receive both love and hate. And then, you know, we have lungta and wangta and all of that. And my lungta wangta is so good. And my baby isn't. It's going to affect my baby, mm. you know. So I'm so superstitious like that. So these are the three main reasons why you don't see my baby's face. Now, if you are a parent like me who has decided to share, there are still safe ways of doing it, right? right? Yes, would, you, yes. would you like to share uh, some of the ways a parent could some make sure that... Yeah, yeah, some, some right. degree of protection right. and uh, privacy to your child right. while sharing your child's image. Right, right. So one we already touched upon, I think, the state of undress, right? Mm -hmm. Never. You never know. Like I was saying, you know, there are people who are like us and there are pedophiles mm -hmm. out there, right? So you never know who's going to consume that kind of information. And you never know how long that image is going to be there for. Like you could have a private account, but then you have so many follows on their private account, you never know who's going to take a screenshot and then share it in a public space, mm. right? So then you want to be careful about that. Maybe if you have a private account, try and filter who your followers are. Are they trustworthy people? Mm. Who are the people you're sharing your content with? This is something you want to keep in mind as well. Mm. Um, if your child is doing some dance moves, make sure that it's a child dancing like a child and not like a child dancing like a grown adult, right? Mm -hmm. So some moves could be more provocative than others. So these are certain things that you want to take some measure of control with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see, I think one, like there isn't a set of guidelines per se, but I think one thing that you want to keep in mind is does sharing it outweigh the benefit of not sharing it? Mm. So that's a great place to start, I think, mm -hmm. even for me, right? Like every time I think, oh, I really want to share, but I'm like, mm, what is the benefit of sharing yeah. this image of my child? You know, yeah. right? Like for you, it helped you deal with a really difficult situation I can't imagine being in your place and you have my respect and admiration especially after I become a mother myself mm. and I can't even handle my baby crying <laughs> for like 10 minutes forget like mm. I was on a stretch you know mm. at a stretch so then I think there are ways to deal and you debunked one myth where they say oh when a mother can a mother should relax by sleeping when you have a colicky baby you can't sleep mm. you can't eat you can't do anything but is you sharing on social media giving you a moment of respite and comfort mm. then yes go ahead and do it you know yeah. it's like like no motherhood journey is um, the same, same yeah. it's unique right look mm -hmm. at the two of us we yeah. have like two complete different journeys right so I think it's basically what works for you but in your mind always remember that not everybody is a nice person on the other side of social True. media and then like I was saying that that baseline that little mm. that little tip is, is is sharing going to outweigh the benefit of not sharing then go ahead and share please mm. yeah Especially nowadays, we have a lot of people using pseudonames and mm. hiding behind like fake accounts. So you right. never know, you can't guarantee. Just like once you become a parent, you cannot really fully trust your child with anybody else. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, just like that, I think uh, what Namge uh, is trying to um, say here is, is the benefit of posting going to outweigh the um, benefit of not, not posting. posting. <laughs> right, and right. I think if we think along that lines, it mm. will help us filter. Mm. And uh, I also read somewhere that if actually you really want to post, make sure it's not just one 
image of your child like alone be right. have it in the family be, right, so that's right, difficult yeah. to crop that's the child out so, yeah. yes because they so, super superimpose these yeah. images so then yeah but i think in bhutan you don't have to worry so much mm. about uh, identity theft mm. like in the west like in the west they do identity theft for credit you know mm. so then that's not something we have to worry about in bhutan in bhutan we just have to worry about the sexual predators i think mm. that's that's the biggest danger in bhutan at, in a time where everybody is posting about their journey uh, mm. uh, about parenting on social media, how do we know if we're oversharing? Mm. I think if this is what you like doing, if this is your personality on social media, go ahead and do it as long as you're taking, like I was saying, you have boundaries, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, for me, uh, I know that my pregnancy as well as my parenting journey, the experiences I want to share, but I don't know if I want to share my child. I so see. I'm still on the fence, right? <laughs> so I will share the experiences I have having, I'm having with my child for the benefit of other mothers. So if I don't post his face, it's okay, right? I mean, all, all babies do things on their own. All yeah. babies know how to do things, right? So then I'm thinking, oh, there is really no benefit lost if I don't post his face to yeah. a Putinese mama to my account. But what they can really gain value from is the sharing of experience. So, so that's how I made my decision. Let's say there's a mother who is um, who, who's new at being a mother and she is new to social media <clears throat> because we're coming to the end of the show now um, what advice would you like to give mm. to her mm -hmm. um, you can go two ways she needs me all my way, right? As a new mother. Yeah. Depends on your situation and your circumstance, really. I don't mm -hmm. want to sit on my high horse and go, oh, all mothers, you know, don't share your babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Hilary Duff. It was Hilary Duff who gave birth just before me, I think. No. And she was posting her pregnancy, mm -hmm. her even her delivery. She mm -hmm. did hypnobirthing and then they were sharing. And if it wasn't for people who shared information like that or you sharing your baby and uh, the experience of colic, right? Your baby having colic. Mothers wouldn't know, right? For the mother, it really is what makes you feel good about yourself because at that point as a new mom, you want things that make you feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. that make you feel empowered and anything that you feel empowers you, please do it. Mm -hmm. But then like I've shared already now, I can't go back and say dismiss everything I've shared yeah. earlier. But then also remember that what you put on the internet will stay there forever. True. I yeah. think that's, that's something that we need to remember because let's say you are having a smooth sail while you're sharing right now. But later when the child grows up, that I, I also read about it, that those images could be, because it's there in the internet, mm. could be used against your child to bully. Yes. To embarrass right, them. Right, right. That's there too, the so, bullying. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, that's something we need to remember as parents mm. um, in this day and age. <laughs> Is there anything you would want to share with the um the parents. I think it's um, I think it's because of the things that I'm exposed to and my mindset that you know I want to give my child as much freedom as he can get in this very controlled world of mm. ours. Right? There are a few things that we can control, and I really want to leave his identity to him and I don't want to create a social media identity for him you know so I start posting things I think oh well I posted him playing football because mm. I was so excited about his football <laughs> skills but I may have created an identity now people have mm. that expectation that oh wow he's going to grow up and become mm. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, or a big football star and that was but it was something I really wanted to share because it was unbelievable he was barely six months mm. and he was he had football skills right so <laughs> I want to avoid doing that uh, henceforth going forward so I'll not put so much there where people can assume that my son has a certain identity or he feels pressured to fit into that identity exactly. that I've created or the parents have created for him. As parents, because technology is so, it's a huge part of our lives now, we have to constantly keep on learning to be, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, evolving yeah. and learning to make sure that we are that we know what we're signing up for mm. and not just us but our children too right. so which is why i'm so glad you came here to talk about it because i don't think i could meet another extreme opposite you know, like <laughs> i went all out and you just like <laughs> went to yeah that. yeah from being like, such no an more. open person yeah. to like yeah i'm so glad thank you so much nange and um, congratulations once again with that we have come to the end of the episode thank you so much for watching we hope you enjoyed the show and happy new year bye bye